by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. Questions are being raised over a payment President Trump made to his former attorney that eventually went to a porn star. I'm Laura Podesta in New York. I'll tell you why the reimbursement could be a liability. The manhunt for an anaconda murder suspect ended here in Butte Wednesday morning. I'll tell you about it coming up. Good morning to you, 6.30 here on your Thursday. I'm Missy O'Malley with Chet Lehman and Matt Elwell will be along with our forecast in just a moment. Our top story for you now, questions are being raised over a payment that President Trump made to his former attorney that eventually went to that porn star. Yeah, the president's attorney, Rudy Giuliani, says it's not a liability. CBS's Laura Podesta has the details. A footnote within a 92-page financial disclosure form shows President Trump repaid his former personal attorney, Michael Cohen, as much as $250,000 for expenses in 2016. I, I don't believe it had to be disclosed at all because I think it was an expenditure that he reimbursed. Rudy Giuliani, the president's current attorney, told Fox News Wednesday night that it was done out of an abundance of caution. He also called for the swift end to special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation into Russian meddling in the 2016 election. The president disclosed everything he could disclose. He can't disclose more than he knows. We think it, it, it vindicates our original strategy. Also vindicates the fact that Mueller should now bring this to a close. The Office of Government Ethics, which released the disclosure form, sent a letter to Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein flagging the update in case it was relevant to any inquiry the Justice Department may be pursuing. To me, that that means that the Office of Government Ethics believes there is a potential crime here and it really should be investigated. Cohen said he used $130,000 to pay adult film star Stormy Daniels days before the presidential election to keep silent about her alleged affair with Mr. Trump. Sources tell CBS News the Justice Department could look into whether the Daniels payment should have been disclosed under campaign finance laws. But at this time, there's no evidence there's an active investigation into the president. Laura Podesta, CBS News, New York. Now, there is a legal opinion at the Justice Department that the sitting president can't be indicted. Giuliani says Mueller told him that he would abide by that opinion. And Mueller's boss, Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein, has indicated he would do the same. Also, uh, some uh, notes to pass along uh, from locally. Finally, some good news uh, for the Missoula area flood victims. That's right. New weather predictions show that the Clark Fork will crest at a lower level than previously predicted. The National Weather Service believes that lower conditions are expected because of less mountain pack snow melt. Now, snow from the mountains has melted at a slower pace than previously expected, which should help flood levels in the area, but those levels are still expected to hit major flood stage. And the mountain snowpack here in the southwest Montana is still running well above normal, which continues to raise flooding concerns. The National Resource Conservation Service is still measuring up to 30 inches of water in most of southwest Montana's mountain range snowpack. With the amount of snow still left to melt, rain expected over the next few days, the flooding concern for farmland and low-lying areas around the region's rivers and streams has increased. Timing is everything with this, isn't it, Matt? Yeah. I mean, we get some overnight temperatures in the 50s. That changes what it we're talking really about. It really does. We're, you're calling 30s by you know, the uh, Very the possible that we'll slow that down a little bit. That's good news on mm -hmm. several fronts. First, the flooding, and then uh, the other part is maybe we'll keep some of that snow in the mountains a right. little longer. Because of the warmer temperatures and the rain showers, our flooding concerns are starting to pick up again in southwest Montana, uh, western Montana as a whole, dealing with uh, several watches and advisories and some warnings along the way. Uh, temperatures this morning into the 40s for the most part. That's still on the warmer side, but we are looking at some more showers and thunderstorms possible a little later today. So you'll probably want to pack the umbrella. Beautiful sunrise right now. I do expect to see those showers and thunderstorms picking up later in the afternoon. Cooler weather is on the way. And we'll talk more about that coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Matt. 634 now on this Thursday. One man in custody suspected of robbing and beating to death a 64-year-old anaconda woman. MTN's John Amy tells us about the manhunt that led to the suspect's capture in Butte. 
Anaconda police suspect 52-year-old Troy Johnson bludgeoned to death 64-year-old Shelly Schaefer during a robbery in her East Park Street residence sometime late Monday or early Tuesday. Johnson was finally arrested Wednesday morning in Butte after a long manhunt. Just tragedy, you know, I hate to see anything like this happen, especially in a small town. Investigators suspect Troy Johnson was living right next to the victim's residence in this part of the duplex, which had no utilities such as power or running water. Um, there was a bed made there and Troy Johnson's driver's license was left inside there. We found a, uh, a jewelry box just outside the back door there. Um, um, after talking to witnesses and we felt we had enough to get a arrest warrant. On Wednesday, police in Butte conducted a traffic stop on Montana Street in Butte where Johnson was a passenger. The female driver got out of the car and Johnson drove away with the vehicle before crashing at Holmes Avenue and Hanson Road. He exited the vehicle. Uh, he. Uh, our officer that was first on scene believed he was pointing a weapon at him. Our officer fired uh, multiple rounds at the suspect who was able to escape off uh, on foot. The manhunt continued for the next four hours that included help from a helicopter. They were searching as well as our canine um, and uh, one of our officers was able to spot this guy just off of Little Basin Creek Road. The manhunt finally came to an end here in a field off of Little Basin Creek Road, where police say Johnson lunged at officers with a knife and had to be subdued with a taser. Sheriff Ed Lester said he's convinced Johnson had no intention of surrendering peacefully. Uh, in my opinion, I think he probably wanted to end it in a, you know, in a hail of gunfire from the police and, and realistically he damn near got his wish. Johnson is expected to be charged with deliberate homicide in Anaconda and could face charges in Butte as well. In Butte, John Amy, MTN News. Now John tells us the State Department of Criminal Investigation also assisting in this case because a Butte police officer did fire his weapon during the arrest. Johnson remains in the Butte Silver Bowl Jail. Meanwhile, the man accused of orchestrating Deputy Mason Moore's death is scheduled to be in court tomorrow. Lloyd Barris is charged with deliberate homicide and two counts of attempted deliberate homicide. Witnesses say Barris and his son Marshall were allegedly seeking to kill a police officer in a suicide pact a year ago. Barris was allegedly at the wheel of the vehicle when his son encountered Deputy Moore on Highway 287. After allegedly killing Moore, the two men led Montana officers in a chase and a gunfight between Three Forks and Missoula. Marshall was fatally wounded and Lloyd was captured near Rock Creek. Now, on Friday, a status hearing is scheduled in the Barris case in Townsend. State prosecutors say they are seeking the death penalty in this case. Also, police confirm they have identified a suspect in the attempted theft of a guitar from Music Villa last Friday. In less than two minutes, the suspect pictured here in surveillance photos was able to make it out of the store with a Taylor acoustic guitar worth about $1,500. His plan was thwarted when he encountered a store employee in the back alley who questioned his purchase of the guitar, handed the guitar over to the employee, and then took off on foot. Photos were posted and shared all over social media and soon led to an identity of the suspect whose name has not yet been released. There's not yet been an arrest in this case. And as the weather gets warmer, be wary of scammers offering to pave your driveway. Now, this week's Fraud Watch, MTN's Jacob Fewer explains how scammers may entice you with discounts, but they fail to deliver. A contractor comes to your home, knocks on your door, and says they've got a great deal. They're paving for somebody else down the street, and they can pay for you, too, for a low price. But the Office of Consumer Protection says not so fast. And you may or may not get what you want. This time of year, we're all working on the outsides of our home. It's getting nice again. Um, so we definitely see an increase in these types of scams this time of year. Demery Nielsen is an investigator with OCP. She says scammers may show up in unmarked cars and offer services they have no intention of providing. To avoid getting taken advantage of, Nielsen says to be sure and do your homework. Get anything in writing. 
um, get a contract. Make sure that on that contract you have um, their business name, their business information, a way to contact them with questions, and then do your research. Um, make sure that they're bonded, insured, registered. Nielsen says not to let anyone pressure you into saying yes, and if you have any doubts, you can call the Office of Consumer Protection. For MTN News, I'm Jacob Fuhr. Now you can reach the Office of Consumer Protection at 406 444 4500. Good advice there. People yeah. always looking to scam you. Make sure you ask and good questions. As you would always say, if it sounds too good to be true, it is. Always. There we go. There you go. There you Chet's go. not coming to pave your driveway anytime soon. I will not be coming no, and no, no, your no. door to pave the driveway. Right now it is time <laughs> for a break, but we'd love it if you stayed with us. Coming up, it's our week of interviews. Continues with Dr. David Parker today, sitting down with congressional candidate Jared Petnato. Coming up in just a moment. But first, let's check in with Nora O'Donnell, see what's coming up at 7 o'clock on CBS This Morning. Well, good morning ahead here on CBS This Morning. We're at the White House with President Trump's financial disclosures and what it means for possible campaign law violations. And it takes a lot of training to be a royal. Charlie Daggett experiences it all from the security driving course to complicated curtsy rules. We'll see you right at 7. <laughs>